What's up with it? What's up? <laughs> Nothing much. Introduce yourself. Let people know who you are. Absolutely. My name, my name is Lola Lede, and I am a native of St. Louis, right here. But now I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I heard. <laughs> Sing a songwriter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, before we get into the music and everything, mm -hmm. and the reason why you're back here in St. Louis. Um, let's talk about your background a little bit. What part of St. Louis did you come up in? So I was raised in a U City area. I went Dang. to Persian. Literally was raised right down the street from Persian. The first house when I moved into was on Julian. My grandmother lived on Raymond. And then we moved to Bartmer Ave. Same street as Persian. Went to Brady Woods. Went to U City High School. So U City was, my, was where I came up at. And um, I've been singing since I was seven. Playing piano since I was seven. Just picked up the bass in 2000, I'm going to say 17. And uh, my background is music, songwriting, bass playing, um, event coordination, and a new entrepreneur. Got my own event space and everything out in um, Georgia. Yeah, I hustle a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 There's something about them U City, man. Them U City residents coming out of St. Louis. There's something about them, man. Yeah. Like Jason Tatum, Nelly. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Nelly was U City. I went to, uh, you went to U City too. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite memories um, just coming up in your city? Some of them are just being like my school being right there. You know, I could I would sneak out of school sometimes, go home for lunch. I remember one time I went home and, and hey, brought my dog. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. So um, Persian, <laughs> Persian was just up the street on Bartman, and so it was houses down. So I would leave sometimes, go home. Uh, play with my dog. I had a dog at the time, and one time she got out <laughs> during. I had snuck down, went to go get her, and um, or play with her, and forgot to close the gate all the way. So she walked her butt up the street, came to the gate, had all the kids like, "Oh, who dog is this? Who dog is this?" And I went to the gate, and it was her, and they let me walk her back back home. So I just I liked the fact that I went to Pershing, um, and just the area I stayed in. Like all my friends were walking distance, right behind my house, or up the street so really just you know the memories in your city was going to school Dale Marloop and Dale Marloop was lit back yeah. then it's not like that no more yeah 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 <laughs> it's not nothing like that but it's like after I had left high school though that's when they started getting wild they started getting wild in Dale Marloop um but before that we used to just go up there and kick it our soul we used to get the new shoes every time they came out and um those were my memories the U City Library um, Skate King, which is not necessarily in your city, but everybody went to Skate King. And then um, just having my friends around in that area, same area. Yeah. You say you've been, you say you started playing music or you just started singing at the age of seven? seven? Yep. So my grandmother had a um, piano in our house, and so I would teach myself how to play piano. Um, so that was around like age six and seven, and then I had, I started, you know, plays and musicals and singing in church around that same age, six, seven years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you get that influence from your grandmother with her having a piano? Was she a musician herself? Yeah, so my grandmother sang, my mother sings. Um, <clears throat> my uh, uncle on my brother's side, he plays bass, he plays a whole bunch of different instruments. And um, my family, my grandmother sang too, sang in church, sang in a choir. So it was my grandmother, my aunt, my mom. Are all, we're all like musically inclined. And my mom has her own band now here in St. Louis. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the name of her band? Um, she goes by Black Diamond. Yeah, so she goes by Black Diamond and then sometimes she performs with like other feature bands. So it'll be like Black Diamond and whoever, whoever. And she do like, isn't like, the, I know they do like the cover bands, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, what's the name? Dirty, Dirty Mugs. Mugs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. I never seen Dirty Mugs. I've heard. I heard a lot about them. Yeah, yeah. I haven't they're talked nice. them yet. Just yep, yet. Heard a lot nice. about them. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Um. After high school, did you pursue college or anything like that, or just? Yeah. So, um. So I graduated high school in 2012. Right out of high school, I went to college. I went to University of Missouri. And I got my bachelor's in animal science. Um. So right after college, I decided that I was going to move to California. So I was looking for jobs out there in animal science. It wasn't really the pay I was looking for. Um, so I moved back home, kind of started over, um, and got a job in healthcare. That's when I decided I was going to move to Atlanta and focus on you know, music and also try to focus on getting a job with that degree. 
So I worked for like a vet tech for a good maybe six months, and then I was like, oh no, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. I gotta get my own job. I have to get my own things because they try to pay me twelve dollars an hour, and I am not here for it. It's giving hey, hell uh, no. <laughs> hey, it's uh, giving how am I gonna survive? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good just to have that freedom too, just on your own, moving yes. your own time. Exactly. I make I a decent amount of money, but. I don't want to work for nobody. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how exactly how I felt. Yeah. Why animal science though? I just love animals, man. Like in every and all animals. Like I mean, anybody who really knows me, I'm the one who usually like, hey, Armani, like, I got a cat and I don't know where to, you know, send her. And you know, usually like home, back home, I found a kitten. When I was younger, I was bringing like animals and stuff in the house, and you know, trying to help them recover and things like that so i've no, always sister. been yeah. <laughs> i've always said your sister like that yes yeah is she a virgo no she's a taurus taurus okay always that's earth sign cat tongue kitten yeah. tongue like, <laughs> the love for animals is just a, a, whole, a whole nother level i love dogs dogs are my are my favorite dogs horses you know any animal that really shows affection i love affectionate animals and my puppy now prime time you know that's my guy yeah, I think that's what you're supposed to say, dog mom. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And kind of before the interview started, you said you moved to Atlanta in 2018? Yep, yeah. 2018. 2018 is when I moved, June 2018, I moved to Atlanta. And been there ever since. So it's almost four years, been four years now. Four years now. Yeah. yeah. Why was the reason? So, um, actually, like, the job I had before you I moved, yeah. yeah. So 2000, it was 2018, and like you said, I was making a nice amount of money, especially for me to be right out of, you know, college. Um, but it was customer service desk job, and it was just very repetitive for me. I get bored real easy. I get bored real easy, and um, I was just sitting at the at the desk one time, like, okay, you know, I, I'm saving up fast. Like, what is my next step? I just felt stagnant, and I don't like feeling stagnant. And so I was like, you know what, <clears throat> I went to school for four years, you know, really for everybody else. Like, I, I went to school because I really didn't have a plan directly outside of high school except school. And so I went to school, did the four years, and I'm like, okay, what's next? Like, I really wanted to be living for me. And, like, it was just, it was impulse. I was like, okay, you know what, I'm giving myself three months. Worked for three months straight, saved up about eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000, got me a new little car. And I packed my car, looked for an apartment virtually, looked for an apartment virtually um, online, got the apartment, and then moved up there. Yep. So it was just kind of like what made it was I was really ready to move on music. I was really ready to like give music and like entrepreneurship a full throttle without being like, without trying to tell myself, oh, you need a big girl job. You need to get a real job. Like, I really wanted to put myself full force in that environment. And you say so you saved up eight to nine thousand dollars and just left? Yeah. Is it based off that? That's yep. a hell of a week. Yep. That's yep. a hell of a week. And I found something like <laughs> that. I, I found something that I would be able to do, you know, without like I'm like okay if I if I have an apartment I know I can pay this apartment on a minimum of three months I can pay bills for three months without having a job so I calculated really how much I would need on a minimum of three months I knew I would get a job in at least three months like I'm not picky when it comes to like you have to go to work like I didn't have all type of jobs healthcare you know worked as a um, housekeeping dog sitter, nanny, dance teacher, it's like any job, McDonald's, like if I had to do it, I knew I was going to get a job, but I'm like, okay, this is how much I'm going to need to just survive, you know, three months, if I don't have a job, I could pay my bills on a minimum. Yeah, mm -hmm. and how would you say that the Atlanta scene, for the most people, like you said, kind of spoke about it too, yeah. that you went there for, to enhance your music career, mm -hmm. how would you say that helped you? Man. And it's, it's helped me in so many ways. One, getting out of my comfort zone. When I when I got out of my comfort zone and expanded me to so many other networks that I would have not been exposed to being in St. Louis. Um, so the first thing that came about this move was an organization that I founded called The Basement Unplugged. And so I created it because it was just a lot of artists and entrepreneurs in Atlanta that I felt were, you know, underrated or they 
um, just didn't have like a nice platform that they didn't have to pay to perform and you know a crowd that actually appreciated them so I started doing these secret location concerts in Atlanta and putting different artists that I felt were really talented or you know hardworking artists um, lyricists poets and I would curate this show and a whole bunch of people would show up to every show so now today we have three different three or four different events under the basement unplugged mm -hmm. one being poetic jazz the other piece and music fest and then urban vendors market and so each one of those shows cater to a different demographic of black artists or entrepreneurs um and poetic jazz we just had the first poetic first jazz yeah. thursday in st louis so. so yeah. it was sold out too wasn't it? sold out it's like how, how does that feel for it to be the first time you've been oh my city? god it feels so good because i remember struggling to get 10 tickets sold. I was at like Firebird or something that it's called here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, I had a show there and you had to like sell a minimum amount of tickets. And you know, I was promoting, doing my little side shows, promoting for it. And people were just not budging. Like so much so my mom had to buy like eight of the 10 tickets that I was required to sell. And I just remember that show and I just felt like so unsupported. And I was just like, what am I doing wrong? You know. Um, so I like being in Atlanta really just it put like a, a spark under my butt to say okay you're not doing anything wrong it's just consistency it's being consistent and showing people that you're gonna work regardless of whether they support or not because somebody's watching somebody is inspired somebody is gonna support you um, and so for me to come back from you know my going away party in 2018 a good 10 people 15 people showed up you know and I you know I always appreciate the people that come but you know you always have like this expectation and so coming back I really I really wasn't focused too much on the capacity of who was going to be there I just was excited that I found a venue I found a spot for us to go to and I found a lineup and it was going to happen but it yeah it sold out and I just <laughs> I was feeling real great I'm still I still am <laughs> and I'm still on a high I seen um, the videos you posted like, on your story and anything like that. Yeah. Like a vibe, definitely thank was a vibe. Thank you, thank you, thank um, you. In the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's doing good. Absolutely. It's, it's in the kitchen. Off. It's taking <laughs> off, it's going up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just listening to the song um, and listen to the lyrics too. Well, people don't really pay attention to the lyrics, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you manifested a better life, creating good vibes. Things like that. Basically, you say like you in the kitchen and mm -hmm. you creating like the life that you want. Basically, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it said. And every time I like introduce the song, I introduce it just like that. You know, um, this song is about manifesting the person you want to be, manifesting the place you places you want to go. I mean, I just got back from Costa Rica, performing in like the, the being the first international artist to perform at the matinee show at their national theater. So it's like these are things that I always said, like, I want to travel the country and perform and, you know, putting the work behind it and it's actually happening. Um, and in the kitchen just hit 76,000 streams. So it, um, it's definitely going to hit 100,000 streams before the end of the year, if not the end of the third quarter. So I just got my first royalty check last month. So, <laughs> yeah, it's doing great. I seen that you had it um, under your name, your LLC. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. A lot of people don't be on that. You yeah. just be putting music out, mm -hmm. not having the proper um, paperwork for mm -hmm. the business. Side exactly, of. yeah. And like you just said earlier really with the Poetic Jazz, part of your, um, you deserve a tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's so. There's also another one of your singles also. Yeah, you deserve <laughs> it. It's out. We just did the music video. Um, I started a GoFundMe campaign towards that. It's like we're literally a hundred dollars away from the goal, um, and so yeah, Poetic Jazz was one of those tour stops on the You Deserve It tour, um, and yeah, You Deserve It is doing great too. We had seven thousand streams, and I released it in April oh, yeah, of so. this year. Yeah. So you pushed that music. Huh? Yeah, I got to, got to. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about the Hustle and Low Studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you about to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, explain exactly what it is. It oh. is it's a spot where you do like lab performance. Yeah, I do workouts and things mm -hmm. there also, right? Yeah, so it's it's basically a, a space for 
um, event planners, anybody who wants to rent it on an hourly basis. It's really just like a media event space, studio, art gallery. It's just an overall diverse um, creative space. A diverse creative space is what we call it. Uh, right now we have a partnership with Dorsey Levins where we have a, a fitness choreology class. It's, you know, a core class. And then we partner with um, another young lady on a dance class. And then we have um, different pop-ups and vendor, vendor markets during different weekends and um, it's open for hourly bookings as well. Um, <clears throat> when we first started it, we reached out on Twitter and we were like, hey, we're opening up this new art gallery. This is going to be the first art gallery of its kind in Mableton, Georgia. We need 12 muralists to bring it to life. And we sent people a prompt. Everybody painted in regards to this prompt. And it really just brought the, the space to life. So it's an art gallery, media studio. We just got done with the phase one, which is really just opening up the space. Mm -hmm. And phase two is actually building out the, the, the media portion of the space. So we're going to have, um, you know, a place where you can do things like this, interviews and photo shoots, backdrops and podcasts and all of that. And that's, that's going to be phase two. So that'll probably come next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dope. We, we got a few locations like that. Like I kind of told you, the one I used to use ended up closing. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, heartbreaking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I also see like you do a lot of working out there also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have like, because, you know, you work out, it ain't just the actual physical aspect of it, it's the diet part. Are you yeah. really strict on your diet? Or? Sometimes, like when I'm, when I'm traveling, of course it's hard. I'm, I used to be very strict on it, like meal prep, eating every three hours, three to four hours. And so nobody tells you that's expensive. It's expensive to eat right, you know, and to eat on a consistent basis. So like when I'm out of town, I really just watch what I'm eating. I don't, I don't eat like you know, fried foods all day or, you know, and if I do, it's very limited. Um, I still make sure I work out whether it's 15 minutes a day or stretching or if I know I'm walking all day, I put on my walking shoes. Um, but I'm, I'm very for, like, just working out, taking care of your body. Um, sometimes, you know, people got vices. Sometimes you got to go on a break with them vices sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, really need just limiting things but yeah i'm when i'm actually in the gym working out i would say prepping for a show like i don't necessarily do fitness shows but when i'm like in that fitness realm it's usually about three months of just strict consistent food working out is what i usually do probably so you probably can prepare for this run you got going on now mm -hmm. so. exactly now, I'm sure like a lot of women, they want to go to the gym and they want to get that um, B double O T Y. Right, they want to get that white booty, but I want to go to the gym. You got to work it out, honey. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, even with that song, you speak about, um, it's a song about body positivity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really like a song just about, you know, a woman coming into like, you know what, I actually am fine. Like, I'm good looking, I'm an overall good woman, and you know, if she's she she's out and she sees somebody you're like you know what she flirting with him like you know just come over talk to me it's just a song just about really just feeling positive about the body that you have mm -hmm. um everybody don't have a big booty everybody wasn't born with the hips everybody don't have the hips and the dips and instead of you being you know feeling bad about it i just really i i really support body positivity no matter what size shape or form you're in just really loving what it is because it's really the confidence at the end of the day mm -hmm. and so that that song is just like a sexy song to make women feel good about themselves you know no matter what what their body just type is themselves. yeah embracing yeah. themselves yeah even with men you know men probably don't admit that but yeah <laughs> uh-huh. We yeah. definitely get a shame to our body. Uh -huh. I used to be, I'm still slim, but I didn't gain a little weight. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good weight, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you this. Um, speaking just like, you know, I guess, body positivity. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a whole controversial case of going on in recent months, a year mm -hmm. or so. The um, Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Man, you know, I'm, I'm a very uh, pro-choice type of person. Um, I really feel like I tell my friends all this, you know, speaking about this all the time, I just feel like if America was to mind their business, 
you know what what i choose to do with my body is not affecting you paying your bills it's not affecting you eating it's not you know what i'm saying so why get so invasive with what i have going on with me you know i feel that a lot of those decisions um should be made with partners not with the government you know and that's that's my take on it i'm very pro-choice with whatever you want to do i mean people are upset you know when people get tattoos and you know people are upset when you get certain piercings or people are upset with who loves who and what they're wearing but if everybody just mind their damn business <laughs> we could all get along so like, like you know that. what i'm saying why are you upset because somebody over there is holding somebody else's hand they didn't come over here and grab yours they didn't invade your space so why are you invading mine and i feel like the government just wants to invade people's privacy and people's choices and we all should have our own choices we all should have our own free will to do what it is we feel that is best for us because at the end of the day it is about you it's about you and the choices that you make and so that's that's my take on it because i'll be talking all day <laughs> but even i feel like men should be um speaking up as well yeah as strongly as the women are because mm -hmm. it affects us let's say yeah you know dealing with a young lady and you might not want her to have a baby mm -hmm. and she's like no i'm keeping this baby mm -hmm. i don't care what you mm -hmm. say for you know whatever reason she may choose to right and now you don't have that choice no more. Yeah. You're shook away from you. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that, that's why I said a lot of those decisions should be on a couple basis, right? Because with me, you know, if I'm if I'm having a child and, and the partner says he doesn't want it, well, I'm no longer going to be with you, you know? And I want you to understand that that's the choice that you made. Maybe he could change his mind down the road or whatever it is, but that's between him and I. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you tell me you don't want the child, well, and if I do, that's is my decision to keep you know to keep the child and it's my responsibility that I now have to take on because you don't want to and I'm gonna be completely honest with my child as well when when he or she is born that you're it was said he did not want you to be here so I have taken care of you or whoever did has stepping up and that's just the real reality of it you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but then there's other situations where you know I won't even go there but specifically with that situation that's always the first situation that people bring up right mm -hmm. because you got a lot of bitter baby mamas and people trying to come for you and attack you and you know child support and all these things so it's really like a a slippery slope when it comes to those personal things but then it's kind of like you know if you don't see yourself having a baby with this person you know to, to go and continue to lay with them and not have the right protection or even protecting yourself as a woman because it's a lot of things you can do to avoid getting pregnant exactly. you know what i'm saying it's multiple things that you need to do or conversations that you need to have with your partner when y'all go there you know what i'm saying like what do we what's what step what step b do you want this child because you have time you know you have time to make a choice and i feel like that conversation first comes within that couple you know, if you don't have that, then it's kind of like, you, sh you shouldn't have been laying with that person anyway. You can't yeah. even talk to Shorty. <laughs> Y'all can't even have a conversation. Mm-mm. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I see you repping for your man, though. Yeah, you know. With the prolific hustle on. Off the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, um, yesterday I tried to pop out to the um, city foundry. Yeah. Um, but my son's practice ended at six thirty, so oh, I wasn't able to make it. It's all good. It's all good. He was there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any um more plans for the rest of time, your time here in St. Louis? Or? Yes. So actually, it's my family reunion weekend. The Williams family. Mm -hmm. So we got family from all around the states coming in and just celebrating. You know, um, over years of I think it might be our. 60th or 61st reunion something like that we've been doing them for a long since i before i was born um so we're gonna do that we're actually gonna go to the picnic after this and then in the evening they have like a grown like you know lit it turn up turn grown up. folks so we <laughs> looking forward to that um but yeah those are the plans and then later this evening i have an interview with uh 1051 who are you doing it with? Um, um Kizzy. Kizzy. Yep. Yeah. Shout yep. Kizzy. Kizzy. Shout out to Kizzy. Shout out to 1051. He's smooth, all of them. You know, yeah, all of, all of them. Yeah, yeah, flight, all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, musically, what do you have in store for the rest of the year? I have so many drops coming. That's the crazy thing. Like, my music catalog is getting oversaturated. My problem is, I'm very picky with what and when I drop it. 
Um, I have a lot of songs that are like four years old that haven't been dropped yet. Uh, but my plan is to, I have about four songs, you know, waiting to get ready to drop. Um, and I, right now I'm just getting the rollout ready. So, you know, what's my plan? Where I want to market it? Do I want to do a tour? Do I want to do another music video? Um, the biggest issue is just funding because I am independent. But I show everybody that when you really have supporters, especially in your community supporters, there are people who want to be a part, especially when you give them something back. Like, hey, if you donate $50, your business uh, gets featured in the video. You know, you get a little, a little Pepsi, you know, commercial real quick. Or, you know, you get put in the end credits with all of your information. Or you get a free t-shirt or something like that. So when people donate towards me, which the last two videos that I've directed have been funded by my community by just reaching out and saying this is what I'm gonna do this is my goal and if you give this is what you get so the plan is to drop at least two more singles before the end of the year what are we in third quarter now yeah so the goal is to drop at least two more singles and next year I'm trying to figure out how to drop stuff without dropping it too much you know like is that a thing yeah, yeah you know I mean, it is like yeah bit. i don't want to like drop too much like in the kitchen for example just turned one last month you know and so like that was a whole i mean that was a whole year and it's like that single still growing so i have time to to let those things grow but i definitely have so many things in store for the future yeah um Speaking of like just the video um, in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I like that video. Thank you. It's a nice vibe. Uh huh. It's like like old school mm -hmm. chill vibe. Yeah, like we just in the house kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. With my friends, just with my people. It's like the song says, "Cutting off the dead ends." Like sometimes you gotta let go of them people who are not who are not nourishing you. And so that's what that video was. You saw I was in a very small group of people. We kicking it at the house. We jamming. Everybody smiling. And that's what In the Kitchen was really about, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, do you have any last words you'd like to share? Um, stream, you deserve it. Stream In the Kitchen because we're, we're, going, we're going crazy. Um, <laughs> follow Lola Lede and The Basement Unplugged. And Poetic Jazz St. Louis will be back in October. We're looking at October 13th. Don't hold me to the date, but I'm, I definitely want it Thursday, October 13th. So y'all have time to get those early bird tickets. Y'all have time to submit, to perform. Um, yeah, that's it. And thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. <laughs>